YouTube family, what's the deal? It's your boy Chris McLean, Cliff of Cliff World TV. And y'all already know how I'm rocking family. And today, man, look, we're gonna take an interesting deep dive into the life of none other than the golden acre golden child, Kodak Black. Yeah, we're gonna take a deep dive into that boy Kodak Black life. We're gonna go check out Broward County, man, Pompano, that Pompano 1800 block, man. Y'all just kick back, man. Get your doobie. Kick back like you're gonna watch the movies, boy. Clip World TV, you're gonna get straight into it. Dyson Octane. A better known to the world now as Kodak Black is undeniably one of the hardest working, most outspoken artists of our generation. Now, there's so many different angles to this young Haitian American rapper that it's almost hard to find where to begin there. But I'm gonna start from the beginning because look, it's the only way. July 11, 1997. In the city of Pompano Beach, Florida, a young Haitian immigrant woman by the name of Marceline Octave will give birth to a little boy that will go on to change the landscape and the music world forever. But this wouldn't be before the streets of Pompano would shape him into the man that we all know and love today. Pompano Beach is a city named after the actual Pompano fish. It's about a 40 minute drive away from the flashy older brother Miami. Located north of Fort Lauderdale, Pompano Beach, for the most part, is a laid-back coastal suburb city, man. It's gorgeous. Got many opportunities for outdoor recreation, but this is that side of it. We're talking about the hood. Pompano City provides all the convenient suburb livings with all the great shopping and dining along the Atlantic Boulevard in the Pompano City Center. Pompano Beach is kind of like Miami. On one side, you got the rich, and they got a wide variety of the rentals that you can choose from, like beachfront condos and charming townhomes. On the other end, the ghetto side of Pompano got the projects. Yeah, one of the projects being the Gold Nacles. But that's just a brief history on Pompano. I just had to give y'all a brief history real quick. Anyway, the young Haitian mother would originally name her precious baby boy Dyson Octave. Dyson actually being a French name, meaning son of God. But later, Dyson's name will be changed to Bill Capri. And I'm not totally sure if this was done by his own admission or if his mom did this later on down the line. But anyways, he would be one of five children. Yeah, one of five children raised in one of the last standing projects in the city of Pompano Beach. The Golden Acre Projects. Located on the 1050 Northwest 18th Drive in Pompano Beach, Florida. But the residents there called this the Pompanoia, or 1800 block. Kodak Black resided at the 1601 Apartment 13. Yeah, that's where he laid his head at at night. And it wasn't like all the other people who rap about being in the projects and in reality. It's their cousin that's living over there. And they used to just go on the weekend. Nah, this was a real project, baby. He'd actually be raised there since a kid. Or should I say, a jit, like they say in Florida. Well, as a jit. Young Bill watches his mother made a life for herself and her children. Oftentimes, they didn't have everything they wanted at the drop of the dime, but she for sure kept them boys fed and clothed. Now, unlike many of the other stories that I bring to y'all on this channel, like Rilo's mom or Lil Yami's mom, his mom was actually a very good mother. Despite raising her children on her own without the father being in the picture, she actually did quite well for herself raising her children. Although at times, it did get rough, and food did get scarce because, hey, man, it ain't easy feeding everybody in the house when you're the only one working, raising five kids. But through all the struggle and adversity, she never abandoned her responsibilities as a mother. I, hey, you got to come in. Anyway, young Kodak would grow up watching and observing the environment that he had been born into. Often, he would see people riding around that know you and don'ts with gold shining in their mouth from the floor to the sun. Yeah, he was drawn from the music, the candy paint, and sometimes he'd just picture himself as the older version of himself possessing some of these same things. And, it, and it, just like the saying always says, man, everything that glitter ain't gold, bro. But the don'ts wasn't the only thing the young Kodak Black would grow up seeing. He'd see the ins and outs on the go-ons about the now infamous ugly corner. And through all this, he'd still somehow come to the conclusion at a very young age that he'd become an entertainer. He'd even audition as a child actor for the children's television network, Nickelodeon. Let's say, call me Titanic because I leave these fools where the ship be. Ooh. <laughs> Let me show you Rebel. He's kind of ugly, but... 
Just you already rebel. know, young rebel. Rebel, rebel, rebel. Oh, hi. Rebel, <laughs> rebel, rebel, rebel. What's up? Hey, nah, man, you know, chilling in California, swiping Visa card, you know, uh -huh. hotel game, filming, yeah, Ho jacuzzi, <laughs> pool. Anybody want to give any shout outs to? Take so green, you know, uh -huh. John John, Yang Yang, Young, young Money. So we gonna watch movies and stuff today, you know, you gotta have fun first. Oh yeah, audition with Nickelodeon, cause you know, a new show coming out, feel me? Just, just stay tuned, I'm gonna be on the, I know how to act. In elementary school, like many other children that come from the southern region of the United States of America, representing the ghetto, young Kodak Black, even at a young age, wanted to be a rapper. And it wasn't because of Tupac like everybody else say, or even Lil Wayne. He was inspired by no other than the man himself, Boosie. Boosie music got a lot of people through the struggle, and this would be no different from Kodak, who hails from a neighborhood that could be identical to those that's in Baton Rouge. The lyrics that Kodak would have panned down at the time as a young man would be evidence of such claims. The older guys in the neighborhood would actually hear how raw and talented the young Haitian boy was with the bars, and they'd bring him around to record his first songs. Kodak at a young age would be invited by the D-Boys in the neighborhood to a makeshift recording studio that was located at the back of a trap house. Now even as a jitterbug, he'd go in there and spit a verse like a grown man, he just had a child's voice. Yeah, between the reaction between those around him and the praise that he'd get in the neighborhood, <laughs> He was certain from that point moving forward that he was going to make it as a rapper. He noticed that whenever the older kids that went to his school would go to pep rallies or talent shows, leading up to the days of their performance, they'd be a little bit nervous. But see, Kodak was charismatic and magnetic, claiming that he never displayed the qualities of fear. Now, although he didn't necessarily like attending school, he'd expand his vocabulary at a young age by reading a dictionary. He was trying to add more words to his repertoire. His mom would recognize that her son was talented and that he had reading and great comprehension skills that were out of this world. So she had signed him up for a camp, and while at camp, he'd participate in spelling bees and he'd win all the spelling bees every time, stating that he didn't even know how he was able to remember rise or sound out the words every time, but he would. Oftentimes, it's the little bad kid in the back of the class that possesses all the smarts. In fact, Young Black almost attended a private school due to him being book smart, a decision that would probably change the trajectory of his life. But his mother decided to go a different route. Kodak would often experience jealousy from the kids his age because he was able to ditch them and go hang out with the big dogs. And in the fifth grade, while the other kids were studying, man, trying to find, trying to find all the questions to the pop quizzes, bro, where they might have forgot their lunch that their mom packed them at home. Young Kodak was in school fighting so much that the school board ultimately decided to expel the young Haitian boy. Yeah, they had to expel the extremely black kid, but in fact, it would be his skin pigment that earned him his neighborhood nickname, Lil Black. Young Black would have run in with the law enforcement earlier on. He would actually be arrested in middle school, and he'd only do about 21 days on his first defense, just nine days shy of a full month. And get this, you two family, Lil Black had developed a skill that was all so common in the Gold Naker apartments. Yeah, he was breaking and entering into unoccupied dwellings and robbing them blind, not even leaving a slice of bread for them to make a ham sandwich. So ultimately, he'd be apprehended and charged for residential burglary. And although he was extremely young at the time, he remembers sitting in the back of the cop car thinking, hey man, he was ready for whatever consequence came with him, man. It's what he signed up for. And as much as I would like to say this was an isolated situation and he'll learn this lesson and straighten up and fly right, <laughs> that'll just be a figment of the imagination. Instead, young Bill would have multiple run-ins with the law enforcement during his juvenile years. And man, his face is even known around Broward County as the little dude to be poking windows. At the age of 11, Lil Black would be his first childhood friend who would also come from a Haitian background. Pierre de la Cise. And now, if I butcher that, you two family, my, my Haitian people, uh, Salive, hey, I'm sorry, man. Anyway, we talk about Jack Boy. Now, Jack Boy, unlike all the other kids in the neighborhood, had a lot in common with Kodak, man. They was bad. They was bad. While other kids was watching Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, Young Black and Jack was already thinking about their finances. 
and it was no secret that Black was advanced at his age on the mic, and the duo would often daydream about starting together while pondering how they gonna come up on some money. Jack rapped as well, but his name is Jack Boy, man. He, was, he wasn't the vocal of the mic, man. Young Kodak Black was the vocal of the mic. And at that age of 12, the young son of an immigrant would take it up a notch, and when it came to his lyrical abilities, the Jet Black Boy would join the local Pompano rap group called the Brutal Youngers, and this wouldn't be no small victory. Somebody with a major bag in the neighborhood somewhere around there was back in the Brutal Youngers. The Brutal Youngers would be seen touring on the West Coast and shooting big budget music videos, man. This was back in the MySpace days. Now, what, F what FYBJ may be saying, uh, do y'all homework on Kodak Black been doing music and poking high as windows since the MySpace days and the boy just now turning 26 years old. But anyways, the Brutal Youngers would actually be more like uh, the young money of Broward County, man. Yeah, they was like the Jackson 5 of Broward County. And Young Black was definitely Michael Jackson. The infamous Golden Acre Projects was no different than the projects in New Orleans. And like Charlemagne the guy from the Breakfast Club always say, the craziest people in the world come from the South Bronx and all of Florida, man. And clearly Pompano Beach was not the exception to this rule, bro. Life was rough out there on that ugly corner, bro. And becoming a casualty or a victim of a crime at random was everyday life. Nobody was really safe at all, even though everyone lived in the same community. And after one long day at work, man, Kodak Black's mom would fall victim to one of these senseless crimes. She'd be targeted and robbed. Now, when he was a jit, get this, the robbers followed his mama all the way home after cashing her IRS tax return, bro. Hey, the perpetrators would actually be armed and they'd take her entire income tax check that she just cashed out. Man, they had to be following her. How they know she was finna cash her income tax check? That sounds like an inside job, Kodak. You should have did some deep investigation. But anyway, bro, this would throw young Kodak for a spin because he understood oh so well that everybody in his environment was living under the same circumstances, poverty, yeah. But what he didn't understand was how could somebody take from a single mother knowing that that's all she had? And not only that, she can barely speak English. Now, this particular situation would make him cold and heartless and he'd later remember saying that when he started to victimize people, he didn't care because they didn't spare his mom, so he wasn't going to spare theirs, bro. Young Kodak would be arrested again at the age of 15 for a crime that was punishable up to life, bro. Well through the goodwill of the universe and pure luck, a local record label owner by the name of A.D., whom was the chief exec at Dollars and Deals, would hear about the predicament that the young, gifted Haitian kid was in, and in true Suge Knight fashion, he had put some bread together to put Kodak on his feet, get some lawyers, who then returned, get the sentence, and drop down to only three years of probation, which was a sweet deal, considering the fact that the offense was punishable up to life in prison. He'd be released and ink the deal with dollars and deals. Kodak would actually release Project Baby December 26, 2013. This mixtape would be one that would uh, essentially put Young Kodak on a map. It would feature songs like Project Baby, Catch Flight, Skit, and Switching Gears. He'd even shoot a music video for the title track, Project Baby, which depicted the life of a kid who was living in the Golden Acre Projects, victimizing their own neighborhood by doing breaking and entrance. On top of that, local legend Polo Poo would encourage Jay Black to change his name to Kodak. A play off the rap legend Lil Boosie's verse on his classic song, Smoking on Purple, when he said, everybody take your picture, they're like, yeah, they call me Kodak. Kodak then would join the Coley family, making him one of the youngest Coley owners. The Coley family would consist of Polo Poo, Coley P, Cheesy Perk, and the youngest member, Kodak Black. Later, he would drop a single that would do good locally, but it wouldn't actually blow up until after he had already became big. No Flocking is a song that depicted a tale in Kodak's neighborhood, in which case some of his close friends started experimenting with a new street substance at the time called Flocker. The song was basically telling them that they needed to get it together. They was messing up. The official music video for this song, ironically enough, wouldn't be released until 2014, 
and this was due to his team building up somewhat of a buzz and suspense around the Florida artists. He was also representing both Coleons and Dollars and Deals Entertainment, so it'll be a good look for everybody. It was all an all win for everybody that was involved. Project Baby, as I stated before, would be the project that will solidify the young Broward County artist as one of the youngest artists to put on for the state of Florida, and he made it look good. Now, before Kodak, of course, there was Rick Ross, and Plies was still holding it down for the state of Florida, but those artists was getting older in age. Until Kodak arrived on the scene, Florida was being overlooked, and it seemed as though the state had peaked during those years of Plies. But that wasn't the case at all. Cities like Pompano were getting overshadowed by the sister of city of Miami. Kodak Black was the hope that Florida needed because, man, listen, just be real. They was on life support. And in the end of 2014, he had dropped his project, Heart of the Projects, that was a playoff of BG's Heart of the Street series. It features songs like Meant For Me, a song where Kodak expresses that he's the golden child of Golden Acres and this life was just meant for him. He didn't choose that it chose him. In 2015, young Kodak couldn't stay out of the hands of law enforcement. Now, even though he was being booked for shows and he was sort of making a pretty decent living considering the fact that he was just shy of 17, he would still find himself engaged in the activities that would lead to his arrest. He had to break into cars with Jack Boy, hijacked him, and in his earlier years, him and Jack Boy were reserved to committing crimes like robbery. All these situations would do was amplify his drive to record. Not only that, it gave him more to rap about. In October 2015, he dropped another single, but this one would shake the world. His single, Skirt. This song literally put him in everyone's musical algorithm. And on even some of the celebrities' radar too. The song would depict a picture of him dealing with a girl that he basically stopped having feelings for. He was done with her. The song would go viral, and Drake would even be seen turning up to the song on his private jet. This, of course, would catapult the song to the billboards. The fame would come so fast that before you know it, he was working with up-and-coming fellow Haitian rapper Rich the Kid, Playboy Cardi, on the track Plug, produced by Mexico Dro. Kodak would also start the Sniper Gang movement, then it later turned into a label imprint that assigned the likes of Wham Spinner Ben, Jack Boy, Psycho Bob, and Wiz the Wizard. And as a matter of fact, YouTube family, y'all let me know if y'all want to hear the actual untold story of Wiz the Wizard. Because man, when I tell y'all that boy lived the life, man, he lived the life. But anyways, Kodak Black would make so much noise in the rap scene that he'd actually make the infamous 2016 Double XL Freshman cover the defeat to the likes of Anderson Pack. 21 Savage, Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Yachty, Denzel Curry, Lil Dicky, Dave East, Designer, and G Herbo. This group in particular would be the new wave for hip hop of that era. Kodak Black would later go on to diss his fellow classmates of the freshman cover Lil Yachty and Lil Uzi, which seemed to be completely at random. Fit rapper. Hey, listen here, man, listen. I got some more albums coming out. I am not like the other. I don't even listen to Uzi. Thinking the booty. They confusing the community. I don't even listen to Yachty. They ain't gonna be dropping no knowledge. Ain't this thing I got my own following. The dude was truly one of the first of his kind to come from the new generation of the Florida rappers and conquer the charts. But he had an extensive rap sheet as well, one that would hinder him from being able to enjoy all of his success, and not to mention, him and his best friend Jack Boy was on the come up together, and every time Jack Boy went in, Kodak came out, and vice versa. His rap sheet was so extensive that I decided to take my time to put a timeline together of all of his charges. October 2015, Kodak Black was arrested for kidnapping, battery, and other charges at the age of 18 years old, man. And in December 2015, he was arrested for marijuana possession just two months after being charged with the drug possession in addition to several more claims. February 2016, he was arrested for sexual battery. Kodak Black allegedly assaulted a young woman in Florence, South Carolina, February 2016. The woman reportedly accompanied him to his hotel room after the show at a nightclub in Treasure City. 
Soon after entering the room, she said the rapper ripped off her clothes, bit her, and you know the rest. He was charged with sexual misconduct. This would be the charge that would prompt Ebro in the morning of Hot 97 to basically interrogate the artist and drill him on the questions and the seriousness of the allegations of this open case. The interviewers would ping pong random questions around the room like what he thought about the moon landing while other questions were loaded with tricky curveballs. Kodak would be seen visibly getting irritated and he eventually walk out of his own interview causing the hip hop media space to go into the uproar the next morning on how unprofessional that Ebro was while handling the direction of the conversation. Ebro would then ultimately ban Kodak Black from performing the Summer Jam, causing the two to have permanent issues that would go on to be unresolved, but the trouble didn't stop for Kodak in 2016. Shortly after the Florence incident, Kodak was allegedly seen by a marijuana from a drug dealer then he got into his car and drove away. When police pulled him over, he attempted to evade arrest and threw a gun from his car, according to the cops. After recovering a loaded 40 caliber Glock 22 pistol, they arrested Kodak for possessing a weapon by a convicted felon, possessing a marijuana and a number of traffic violations. He'd be released yet again, and then he'd be arrested yet again for false imprisonment and armed robbery. While he was in jail for this arrest, outstanding warrants for his criminal sexual misconduct case in Florence and the marijuana possessing charge from 2015 were brought to light. August 2016, after spending three months in jail, Kodak Black was sentenced in August to one year of house arrest and five years of probation. He was also reportedly ordered to complete community service, anger management, and community control supervision programs. However, he could be placed on house arrest because the open warrants for the St. Lucie County drug possession arrest halted his release. In addition to that warrant, his charge of the criminal sexual misconduct in the Florence case was changed to sexual battery, which carries a penalty up to 30 years in prison. And in September 2016, a month later, he pleaded no contest to the St. Lucie possession case and was sentenced to 120 days in prison. The following month, November 16, 2016, Kodak Black was released from a St. Lucie County jail and extradited to South Carolina to face the sexual battery charge. December 1st, 2016, as predicted by his lawyers, Kodak Black was freed from the South Carolina jail after posting a $100,000 bond for the sexual battery charge. He posted on Instagram that he was Happy to finally be getting home to family and friends that he had looked forward to clearing his name in the very new future. He had started his new year off vowing that man, he gonna follow all the court guidelines and he'll make it his new year resolution to stay out of jail, man. But the following month, February 2017, he'll be arrested for violating house arrest and assaulting a bartender. After appearing in court in Broward County, Kodak Black was arrested for violating the terms of his house arrest, and he was also charged with false imprisonment. The decision to take a man to custody had stemmed from an incident where he had allegedly assaulted a bartender at Club Climax in Miami earlier that February. Charges weren't formally filed against him, but the woman identified Kodak Black as the man who punched and kicked her in the club. And the police incident report was presented in court. April 21st, through May 4th, Kodak Black was enrolled in a number of legal issues. On April that year, he was accused of grabbing his anger management counselor by the arm after she had threatened to call 911 on him and he refused to leave the session. She reportedly asked him to leave because he was intentionally disrupting the session by burping repeatedly. Five days later, on April 26th, he was found guilty of five counts of violating his house arrest. On May 4th, he was sentenced to 364 days in prison with the possibility of release early if he completed life skill courses. He successfully finished the course and was released in June after serving just 97 days. He was arrested again for grand theft of a firearm, two charges of possession of a weapon or ammo. Man, this dude, man, YouTube family, don't be... Anyway... 
Kodak Black entered a plea of not guilty, and he was again sentenced to 364 days in prison with the remaining charges stemming from his January arrest. Now, he'd get credit for 90 days time served while he was in jail awaiting trial yet. So he was released in August of that year. Now, during that stint in jail, Kodak Black seemed to, you know, try hard to turn his life around. He earned his GED and he changed his legal real name to Bill K. Capri. Now, just in case y'all was wondering about that question that was asked at the top of the story, there is your answer. Now, he even tweeted about reading the book. Shortly after his release, it was revealed that he'll also be let off probation, truly cementing his freedom. For a while, things seemed to quiet down for Kodak as he continued to release songs collaborating with artists like Gucci Mane, Bruno Mars. He was, he was doing his thing. And in May 2019, Kodak Black would be arrested yet again for weapons possession. Kodak Black and three others were apprehended by the U.S. Customs and the Border Protection agents while trying to cross into Canada from New York. He was found with a 9mm Glock pistol in marijuana and was taken into Niagara County Jail. He paid about $20,000 to $40,000 to make bond, and then he walked out of jail with a fan of cash cover in his face. Then less than a month after this, he was arrested on weapons charges in Miami. Just before he was set to take the stage at the Hip Hop Music Festival, Rolling Loud. He was apprehended by U.S. Marshals for state and federal firearm violations following what was described to be an extensive investigation. The federal charge arose from an instance in which the rapper allegedly lied about the status of a criminal case where he filled out official paperwork for a gun that he had purchased. In November 2019, he was sentenced to three years and 10 months in prison. And behind bars, he had heated confrontations with the guards at the high security prison, Big Sandy in Kentucky, which prompted him to file a lawsuit that accused prison staff of beating him and restraining him from eating food while restraining him down for hours with no access to a bathroom. The Bureau of Prison claimed that Kodak had been restrained because he violated and spit at the guard's face. His third album, Bill Israel, was released in November 2020 while he was still incarcerated. Kodak Black would take to Instagram to air out grievances to the world on the inhumane conditions that he had been living in. Now, in a strange turn of events, Kodak Black was also locked up with BG from Cash Money, who just came home. And he had confided that Kodak was addicted to the K2 spice, a marijuana substitute that's actually loaded down with unknown chemicals, causing the users to completely be out of their minds while they're under the influence of it. It seems as though Kodak was in the pen clucking like a chicken and acting like a straight J-cat. BG would actually tell this to his new cellmate who would go on to release an interview and talk about the situation. And there was another thing that he would have to face coming out on the, on the penitentiary yard. Because in the penitentiary, all the Crips are together along with the Bloods. So the Crips and Bloods was together. During this particular situation, this also got to be dealt with or politicked out with the Crips with him coming on the yard because they won, they together. You see what I'm saying? So he desired to come, he wanted to come on the yard? No. Shit. Man, you know. So when you come into Big Sandy, the first thing you do is you have to go into a quarantine unit. And you have to stay in the quarantine for two weeks before they allow you out into the population because you're coming from another prison and they want to make sure you don't have it. So for you to go PC under these conditions, when you already is damn near all of us, the whole compound is locked down. You ain't even facing nobody. So he come out of quarantine after them two weeks. How, how do you know he's in PC? Because he didn't come on the yard? Or? Or, because one thing, the officer is going to get you from the PC unit, walk you through the unit to the shoot. It's a long walk. That's what they call it in the, in the federal system. Like, man, take that walk, make that left. So when you walk in, they got to secure the whole compound. Secure the compound, they're going to announce it over there. Secure the compound, secure the compound. So now when they secure the compound, people's going to come to the door and they're going to see you walking from the, the people come from the yard, the compound officer is gonna come in the unit because they don't work the unit, come in, grab you, and have to escort you past everybody along the walk to walk you to the shoe. So during when they say secure the compound, everybody gonna come to the door, they looking, and they looking out the window. Oh shit, that's buddy, that's dude. 
Where you, uh, where you going? Like, so this is the type of buzz you're gonna get around the prison. So now, just go and find the door. We got our ways of communicating. People are gonna communicate certain stuff to people that's on the yard and that's on the compound. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, in prison, they got everybody got different communicating different ways. And you see this with your own eyes. You see yeah, that? Yeah, you watching this. He, he made a conscious decision on his own to check himself in, just like he made himself a conscious to call his mother and be like, they don't have a drug program here. They putting their hands on me. You feel what I'm saying? This type of situation. So that's why I see it. The detail part as far as they had a drug program. Big saying I taught the drug program. I taught it. He was making those statements because he was trying to leave, they're trying to get out of it. Or uh, well, whatever he was doing, I don't know, I can't speak as far as like, you know, what his mind frame was at the time because he wasn't in his mind frame right because, like I said, he was cooking out on the K2. He wasn't himself. Mm. And you know where that come from? When you say cooking out on the K2, what's that? Like, when you start having episodes, throwing up, you're getting violent, you're barking like a dog, you're making animals, noises, you're locking up. Because a lot of that stuff, have, when you smoke, you smoke a chemical. So when you smoke the chemical, you, people have a different reaction to the chemical that they smoking. Kodak Black would actually check off at the yard after being confronted by Crips who had an issue with what Kodak Black had to say following the death of Los Angeles, California, rolling 60s Crip mascot, Nipsey Hussle. Matter of fact, shall we run down a list of all the beefs that Kodak been in, man? All right, let's do that later in the story. Anyways, by the grace of God, Kodak Black was given a presidential pardon by none other than Mr. 45 himself, Donald Trump. January 2021, Donald Trump set Kodak Black free and the whole world was appalled. The grant came at the last moments of Donald Trump being president at the White House. The president's press team pointed out that the rapper's past charitable donations was justification for ending the prison term early. Now. Some speculate whether Trump did this as a jab at Hillary because y'all know Hillary and the Haiti relief. It's a long story. If you don't know about it, look into it. But I, I don't know, man. I don't know. That's all up for speculation. Kodak's attorney, Bradford Cohen, a vocal supporter of Donald Trump, one time contestant of Trump's show, actually The Apprentice, he had filed for an act of clemency on behalf of Kodak Black. Now, I'm still unsure how they pulled that off, but if you ask me, Young Thug and YNW Melly and Tory Lanez lawyers should probably take notes. Now let's get into the brief beefs that Kodak had participated in since the rise of his fame. Now warning YouTube family, just like his rap sheet, his beefs are extensive. Somehow, someway, <laughs> let's just jump into it. Kodak's black camp got the beef with the NBA camp and this would prompt Quando Rondo and Lil Pab to burn Sniper Gang merch alongside Lil Tim. Then he'll get in another silly internet beef with the popular Pooh over his famous money spread in the ad lib brr. In the Kodak's defense, he did popularize both, but playing devil's advocates, bro, you influenced the whole new generation, you should kind of be flattered, but nevertheless, he'll find himself beefing with the Memphis rapper over something that petty. He'd also get into a beef with Aiden Ross, which is weird to me because Aiden Ross will go on and sneak this Kodak Black out of nowhere saying that when was the last time somebody listened to Kodak Black? In which case, Kodak seemingly ignored it, but he did respond saying that he didn't even know who Aiden Ross was. Kodak Black would also get into a riff with the GOAT himself, Lil Wayne. The beef would start because Lil Wayne failed to mention that he actually knew who Kodak was because he probably didn't know who Kodak was during a Hot 97 interview. Kodak would go on to also diss Young Ma in a funny back and forth and on one of the songs that he made called Pimpin' Ain't Easy, he said he don't even see the confusion. He hit Young and May as long as she got the coochie. And like I said, man, it was just a personal, funny, hilarious back and forth to me, man. It was, it was just funny. Now, he'd also get into it with his ex girlfriend, Young Miami of the City Girls, one half of the City Girls that is, and he'll get into it with her boyfriend who's now her baby daddy slash super producer, Southside. I mean, but it didn't really end well, so I don't even wanna speak on that, but they say Kodak did something from behind, but we, we ain't gonna speak on that now. Now the beef that took the world by storm was when he was released from prison by being pardoned by Donald Trump, and Kodak Black would take to the internet to come out the Jack Boy saying that he never ever sent him a buffalo nickel. 
and he had signed a $3 million deal, and he didn't cut Kodak Black in, <laughs> wouldn't even give him a slither of butter to rub across a piece of toast. The two after that would go on to exchange diss tracks, with both artists coming with loaded heat while attempting to expose each other before the world. And in one song, Kodak Black would be vulnerable with the fans. He would admit that he had a relationship with a substance by the name of Crystal. This is thought to bring users down to his knees in complete defeat, so I hope he get it together. He loud as shit, bro. So it's like, I was already about to call my fans. So when I stuck out of the fans, y'all knew me, 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 y'all Kodak Black would also fall out with his day one Wiz the Wizard, man. And not even days after the news would go public, Wiz the Wizard would be found dead in his old neighborhood, sparking rumors that Kodak was involved. Everybody thought that Kodak had them Zoes do that work for him. Kodak Black would also fall out with the Crips all across the nation for his untasteful comments about Laura London after the pass in the Nipsey Hustle, which would prompt the ATL co-star T.I., a.k.a. Tip Harris, to step in and speak for the actress, only to get a fierce response from Kodak calling him a rat. Kodak Black even had beef with A Boogie with a hoodie for allegedly being involved in getting one of their hybrids chain snatched. And if that's not a bad look enough for Kodak, he would also leave a distasteful farewell response to his past collaborator, PNB Rock, after he had tragically lost his life while enjoying Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Kodak would take to the internet after the incident and say RIP to PNB Rock with a plate of what looked like homemade chicken and waffles that was nowhere near close to Roscoe's. Kodak Black is something else to say the least, man, but you gotta love the boy. Although right now, in his present moment, bro, he can't be operating on 100% with the decisions that he's been making now. He did a song with Takashi 69 the rumor is that he got paid a million dollars for the song. YouTube family, I'm going to be real with y'all. I am in no predicament to turn down a million dollars, but maybe Kodak Black is. I don't know, but I'm telling y'all I'm going to take a million dollars now. Anyway, the whole world is upset with him, man. And then he goes on the Drink Champs, and he sparks up even more controversy. Everybody thinks he's on some type of substance. Him and Ray J gets into it. You know, it's a, it's, it's a big old tobacco, bro. So I hope whatever it is that got the young rapper in bondage, I hope she pulls through. Kodak, if you if you hear this video, baby, pull through. Now, I'm not saying you messed up, bro. I, I realize that you, you've been talking like this since the beginning. Well, I don't saying, bro, go eat a ham sandwich or something, bro. You looking bony, scaroni, man. It's your boy, Crispy Clean Cliff, a Cliff World TV, man. If y'all got anybody else y'all want to hear, bro, y'all already know what to do, man. Hit that comment section. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm gone. YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my girl here by Honey Man. She is CEO, loctician, beautician, all-around miracle worker out of Spokane, Washington. But if that bag is right, she will fly to you. Now, I'm telling y'all, I have seen her turn some solid tools into dimes. Some solid tools into dimes. Some weight at the back of the line, so you ain't got to wait in line. Said, man, if you need your retwist, if you need your edges laid, if you don't want to go outside looking played, man, because I'm telling y'all, some of y'all, I seen y'all out there last weekend, and you was looking a little crushed. And she do kids here, too. And I seen some of y'all kids pictures, man. And, hey, man, on picture day, that hair was nappy. So if y'all didn't have nobody to do it, I'm telling y'all, putting y'all down right now. Hair by honey, your booking done right now. You can't let your appearance be the interference. Don't let your appearance be the interference, I'm telling you. Don't try to lay your edges yourself. It ain't going to work. Hair by Honey. She is a professional. She does this for a living. Get your booking right now. It might be a line, but for the right time, you might be able to jump the line. YouTube family. I'm going to need y'all to tap in with my boy Mimosa, man. And my been with Mimosa and his podcast. Look, if you're in the greater Northwest area and you're trying to get exposure, man, and you know you deserve that spotlight and your music really hidden, Mobby with Mimosa is the place to go. I'm telling y'all, man, he running the multimedia blog site and he'll pull up for the interview. 
He's been seen on camera with Big Sad 1900 collaborator Lil Booth out in Tacoma. In that interview with Ye Ye, he did an interview with XD Stacks, FTFKT, and man, he even got me and BBDL on the interview, man. Listen, if you in the greater Northwest area and you want some exposure, I'm telling you, Vancouver, Tequila, Tacoma, Seattle, Kennewick, Royal Orange, Renton, Belltown, tap in with my with Mimosa, man. He on the rise. I'm letting y'all know, man. He one of my guys. I'm putting a stamp on it. Look out for my with Mimosa podcast and make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Listen, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't inbox me any more links. If you in the greater Northwest area and you rap and you make music, I don't want to see no more links. Don't inbox me any more links. I need to see you on Mobbing with Mimosa's podcast. Then I'll pay attention. YouTube family, I'm going to need y'all to check out my boy Ari Young, man, coming out of California. He a streamer, he's a YouTuber, and he's an artist. Let's just say he's multi-talented. I mean, hey, the boy could be the next Constantinette. Twitch, holla at my boy, send him a bag. To everybody that be on Twitch, even Discord. Man, y'all need to holla at my boy Ari Young, man. This the wave of the future. Live streamers are creating a new millionaires, and I got faith in my boy Ari Young. I mean, he was smart enough to get the promo. Y'all make sure y'all tap into his show, Stay Cloudy. Subscribe to him on Twitch, Area. Man, look, he gaming, he doing music, he live streaming, blunt rolling contest, Mario Kart, you name it. Like I told y'all, this the wave of the future, man. Now let's jump into the video y'all been waiting for.